reached the part of our project now where we're going to cut our cripple studs. Now, I have all these short pieces of wood because on a job site, after you cut your studs, if you, if you have walls that are a little bit taller or shorter, sometimes you'll have a lot of scrap. And a window is a great place to get rid of some of this scrap. So I have all these pieces that are varying sizes. So the first thing I'll do is I'll grab one of these scraps and I'll slide it right down here and I'll just go to right to my bottom line and I'll make a mark. A crow's foot right on that line. I do that because that's easier than whipping, taking out my uh, tape measure, measuring, walking over, and measuring. If I mark it right where it's at, I know this one's going to be good. So what I'll do is I'll say number one and number one. So I'll take another piece of wood, piece of scrap, and I'll come over and I'll do the same thing on this cripple. I'll go to the bottom line, and I'll make a crow's foot, and I'll write number two upside down. <laughs> so I'll know which cripple is which. So now I'll step over here, and I'll cut these two cripples. All right, one quick thing about cutting cripples. When you're grabbing blocks from the job site, be aware that sometimes they'll be cut, well, just a little bit askew, okay? A little bit askew is not too bad if you measure off the long point. A little bit askew is bad if you measure off the short point because then your, your piece is going to be too long and you'll have a big bow in your sill plate. So what you do is you try to find, you look for the, the uh, studs that already have the manufactured end, end on them and you, put the, you measure from that end over. On something like this where I got both ends cut, I'll kind of look at it, check it, and that's the better of the two. It's pretty good and I'll use that end. If you, if you don't do that, pretty soon you start getting wavy sill plates. So I'll nail this one right here. Ah! Not the right one. You always want to make sure. You always want to make sure you have the right cripple in the right place. Now my cripple here is covering my line. When I put it on here, that might be due to a variance in the in the sill plate, the sole plate, excuse me. So if I'm if I'm a little above my line, I'm gonna start gaining a little bit as I go up. I don't think that's a big critical issue. If you're only a sixteenth or an eighth off, it's not a it's not a big deal in a window because the windows are usually about an inch smaller than the opening. You have a half inch on top and a half inch on the bottom. So your opening can be a little bit out. You don't have to really sweat it and make sure that it's absolutely perfect, you know, running back and forth to the saw. So as long as it's right in there close, you should be good. Now I'll just hold it. I just, I hold it like this. Maybe my hands are a little bit too big here, but I just generally hold it like this so I can feel both sides of the stud when I nail it because I don't want my cripple to be over here and have a big bump on the inside. I'll put a couple nails at the top and then I'll stagger my nails down and I'll put a couple toenails into the sole plate. step over to the other cripple and I'll nail that in place and then we can go ahead and put in our sill plate.
All right, grab your silt plate, and you want to make sure it's not wrong. In other words, when I lay it down here, make sure that your layout lines up. So, I know my layout works well this way. So drop it in. Next, we'll measure our cripple stud lengths. 32 and 3 quarters. 32 and 3 quarters. Now, I'm just going to march down and I'm going to measure these. I'm going to put the measurements there and then I'm going to put them on my handy little block and carry them to where I'm going to cut my studs. Okay, well, now I'm going to cut those cripples. We're almost done. We'll come back, we'll nail them in place, and then the last thing is we'll grab the other plate that we already cut, we'll nail that in, and we walk away. Next we'll put in our cripple studs and I'm just going to follow the layout like we did all along. Occasionally what will happen when you're putting in your studs is you'll bump into a foundation bolt or a washer. Now it's just, I mean, I'm so close to my line when I hit it, let's say a quarter of an inch. You can trim off a little bit of, you know, just run your saw blade at the bottom of your stud and trim off a little bit to make it slide over the top of that washer. Sometimes you'll have to do that. In this case, I'm so close to that, that uh, my layout line when I hit the washer, I'm going to go ahead and put it in place. I don't think that much difference if a piece of plywood lands on it is going to affect my layout. So just wanted to mention that. One thing to bear in mind, when you come over with your cripple studs and you start putting them in, some may go in well, some may fight with you. If it fights with you, step over, trim a little bit off of it and come back. And if it's too short, it's probably okay because the nails will hold it in place if it's just an eighth too short. If it's a quarter too short, now that's up to you because if you can live with it, that's all right, I guess. But generally what you'd like to do is you'd like to get that, that stud to be the right length. So spend a few moments, go cut the new stud, use that one that's too short for a short, shorter uh, cripple stud somewhere else. Another little trick is when you're nailing toenails like this, I usually hold it about a quarter of an inch further away than it needs to be when I start my first toenail. Because by the time I finish hitting that toenail, it's going to move the stud over and over and over and over. If you start right on the line, you'll be too far over the line. So start a little bit away from the line and your toenails will come out all right.
All right, we're ready to put our sill plate on, our top sill plate. You can call it your double sill plate. And this one doesn't have any criteria. You do realize, though, if when you marched ahead and you put this first sill plate on without the studs down here, and if you got carried away and ran over here and then threw this one on second, and nailed it down nice and good, you'd have a real rough time nailing your studs in. So one plate, studs, then your double plate. Now what I'll be doing is I'll be doing just what I did on most everything else. I'll put two toenails into this cripple, two toenails into this cripple, and then I'll stagger my nails just like I have been on the rest of my cripples. Okay, so your sills and your cripples get staggered nails so the wood doesn't twist. Home Improvement Camp. Have at it.